Hello, Syngap Land. My name is Michael Gralia, and today is Saturday, September 2nd. This is episode 113 of Syngap 10, your what used to be a 10 minute weekly briefing on everything you need to know about Syngap 1, but it's rapidly becoming just at least 10 minutes on everything you need to know about Syngap 1, and it's not actually weekly. Speaking of which, I was trying to make it weekly, and last week, nine days ago on Thursday morning, I was sitting here, my notes were typed up, and I was excited to give you guys a Syngap 10 on schedule, and as I will talk about later, my whole day went up in smoke, and actually it's taken out my whole week. So this is the first time I've had a minute to sit here and give you guys an update, and I'm excited to do that because there's so much to do. I was I was typing up the notes, the two week notes, and I realized that I could organize tonight's podcast by um by heroines, by some of the superhero ladies that work in SRF, and I want to start with Vicky Artiaga. Vicky Artiaga is the mom of Amelia. She lives in Florida and Colombia, and she um, called me when her daughter was diagnosed. I love everything you're doing with SRF, but you're not doing enough for the Spanish-speaking world, and we should translate everything and do it all for the Spanish-speaking. And I said, go nuts, Vicky, go nuts, because that's how SRF works, right? This is not the mic show. This is the let's build something, and then when a parent shows up, they don't have to waste time with a website. They don't have to waste time with a 501c3. They don't have to waste time with auditors and financials and all this stuff that we do. Right? There's a lot of work to run an the organization. They can just focus on the problem they see and do it. And Vicky is the queen of that. So first thing she did is, and then you know she keeps coming to me and being like, hey, that's great, but what about doing it in Spanish? I said, go nuts. So that happened a year and a half ago. She said, the round tables are amazing, but what about the Spanish speaking world? I said, go nuts. So she did an amazing first round table in Spanish. And guess what? September 23rd in 21 short days, uh, three weeks from today, there's going to be the Spanish, the second Congreso in Espanol um, with an amazing lineup of, of lots of researchers. And um, Cobe is going to be there. Perez is going to be there. Ana Menorance is going to be there. Um, I think Isabel Asnares from Stoke has agreed to speak. There, there's a long list of people here. It's an incredible, incredible online event in Spanish. The scientists and clinicians are, oh, Andreas Jimenez is speaking. Um, are speaking in Spanish, and the, and then all the clinicians in the Spanish-speaking world can get that content in, in Spanish. It's going to be amazing. So good job, Vicky. If you are a Spanish speaker or you know someone who is, try to go to that event. Also, and I'm really proud of this. I'm really proud of this. Um, you know, Syngap 10 has been a really powerful tool for connecting with patients and educating and making people aware of all the good work of the fund. And as you know, Ashley Fry does Syngap Stories, which I'll talk about in a minute. But now we have Cafe Syngap One, which is going to be a podcast in Espanol for the um, Spanish-speaking community. So that's incredible work. Paulina Polanco, Marlina, Vicky um, on the front end are doing all the work there. And then on the back end, we have Ed and Roy helping. It's awesome. So the first episode is up. As, as of this moment, it's on YouTube, it's on Google, it's on Spotify, it's on Amazon Music. It's not yet on Apple. As soon as it goes up on Apple, we'll drop the second episode. These podcasts are powerful ways to get useful information and hope to families. And the fact that Vicky's team and under her leadership were doing it in Spanish is awesome. So go Vicky, go Fondo Singap. Oh yeah, by the way, where's Vicky this week? Vicky is at the ILAE. ILAE is the International League Against Epilepsy. They have a very large meeting every couple of years. Next week, starting today actually, it's in Dublin, Ireland. Unfortunately, I just, with our move and everything, I couldn't go. Uh, Katrine Deckers, who leads Syngap Research Fund EU, is going to be there. Olga flew out from Texas. And Vicky will actually be presenting um, virtually a session called Clinical Diagnostic Challenges in the Genetic Epilepsies and Opportunities for Precision Treatment. So Vicky's really becoming a voice among the rare epilepsies and in the Spanish-speaking community. So it's it's awesome. And everybody who sees Vicky should compliment her on her tireless work to help Amelia, to help all the kids with Syngap 1. She's a real example for all parents of what is possible. If you just say, hey, I see something that needs to happen and I'm going to do it. And I'm going to call Mike and he's going to say yes. And then we're going to do it together. And that's exactly what happened. Good job, Vicky. Next superheroine, Ashley Fry, who I alluded to before of Syngap Stories, um, has been doing some awesome work. So a week ago on Thursday, I was going to tell you that she had a Syngap story with Summer Katnani. And Summer's um, Syngap story was all about her daughter, Rima. And there's some wonderful bits in there about Rima's grandpa who volunteers with us and also about the modified Atkins diet. 
So for the for, so for the, if you're new here, keto is the oldest known treatment for epilepsy. Some Syngapians do well on keto. In my experience, most Syngapians find full blown keto, which is a very high ratio of fat, to be too much, and they don't do well. But when you lower the ratio to a lot of fat instead of a crazy amount of fat, um, they actually do really well. And that was a great treatment for Tony for about four and a half years. So Summer talks about her experience with Rima on the modified Atkins diet, which, which I refer to as keto light. And it's just a really, really good interview. If you haven't listened to Syngap stories, go ahead and subscribe. But if you want to start with an episode, there's so many good ones. This one with Summer's really good. Um, so that's Ashley Fry, superheroine number one. Number two, at the top I mentioned that my world got blown up last Thursday. It got blown up because Tony had a, a, a bad day at school and it got really bad. And as a result of that, I've been at school for a week and there's just been a lot going on. I'm not going to talk about that here because after I shared it with Ashley what was going on, she said, let's do a Syngap story about it. And I think we dropped that two days ago. So if you want to hear what's going on with Tony and in my life and where I've been for a week, Go ahead and listen to that uh, Syngap story. I'm so grateful that Ashley has that platform and can share this because aside from being important to understand what's going on with me and with Tony, what's really important as a Syngap parent is you have to understand that, that these kids are getting bigger and more complicated and we got to face that and we got to be ready for it. There's no value in pretending that things are going to be, maybe I'm the lucky one where things won't be that bad. Things are going to get a little nuts. And, and the, 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 the more prepared we are, the better. So please listen to that Syngap story. And then, of course, last week, I could not go. I was getting ready to fly to Atlanta on Saturday. So a week from right now, I was supposed to be on a, a week ago from right now, I was supposed to be on a plane going to Atlanta. And I had to cancel that trip because of what happened with Tony on Thursday. And I just called Suzanne Jones, who, who is the host of the soiree in Atlanta. And I said, Suzanne, I know you have me speaking, but I just can't do it. And... Um, Ashley Fry said, I will speak. And so she went and she spoke and it's incredible. Her speech is incredible. So go ahead and listen to that on YouTube. The link is in the show notes. Um, please check that out. I'm going to make sure that link works before I publish this. And thank you, Ashley Fry, for your incredible work. Um, Super heroine three, Sydney Stelmazic, Emmett's mom. She is on the board. She has been a tireless part of SRF. I remember our very first phone call years ago when she was in Africa and What's funny about, th there are some people who work, 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 work. You're like, yay. And they're like, yay. And there's some people like Sydney who like, work, 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 work. And then she calls me and she's like, I don't think I'm doing enough. <laughs> I was like, what are you talking about? I can't even keep up with everything you're doing. Um, Sydney's amazing. Sydney's amazing. And and the, the her three claims to fame are she's an amazing mom to Emmett. She is our relationship manager for the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. So she, she is. She lives in Pittsburgh. She's seen it chop. She she holds a relationship with, with Ben Prosser and Mathingo Helbig, and she advocates for SRF there, which is wonderful. And she also is married to Brett, who of YouTube fame and UFD Tech, and he has the Cannibal. So those are the two things I want to call out. An update on Chop. Many of you are calling Chop and asking for appointments, and that is great. I want to let you know that so far Chop has seen sixteen one six of our patients. Of the um, and a lot more than that have signed up. They are trying to get people in. They are trying to get people in. Their dance guard is filling fast. So if you called them and you haven't heard back, by all means, bug them, bug Sydney, but understand that um, they are working hard, fast and furious, and they are learning a lot about Syngap One. About a week ago, I had a call with Ingo and, and Sydney and the team, and um, really exciting to hear what's going on at Chop. So thank you, Sydney, for being a part of that relationship. Um, I do want to call out that they are doing QEEG. And the thinking here is that QEEG is Syngap 1 compatible. What that means, we all take our kids to get EEGs. People put glue on their heads. They hate it. They rip it off. It's a big mess. You got to get the glue out of the hair. No one, no one likes these things. But they're necessary because our kids have seizures, right? But a QEEG, I guess it stands for quality. Who knows? Is like a hairnet. So it's a hundred and something nodes and they just, they dip it in this fluidy stuff. And then they put it on the head and it sits there for 20, 30 minutes. And then they and then they lift it off. No glue. They get great data because there's so many electrodes. Really powerful tool. That's also part of the natural history study. We need a biomarker. I've talked about this before. But um, 
you know, Ingo was really excited. He said, I didn't know if this was going to work with some Gapians, but I'm starting to think it's going to work with some Gapians. So that's wonderful. And then I, I'm throwing that under the chop thing, which I'm throwing under the Sydney thing. And also under the Sydney thing, I want to talk about Cannonball, October 4th through 6th. Go ahead and block off your calendar, cancel your meetings. All you're going to do is watch YouTube because Brett and Peter and another somebody is going to drive across the country in another electric vehicle. I think we're doing a Ford F-150 this time and they're going to raise money for Syngap 1. I'm super excited for that. Um, and again, the Stalmazics, Sydney and Brett, amazing, amazing people. Um, I think that third seat is open. So they're looking for a third dad. Um, I can't go because I'm actually going to be going to chop. But, you know, we got to find a third dad. So if you're up for it and you want to go and promote Syngap for a while, go for it. Superheroine number four, I want to shout out to Daniel Andrade. Not a Syngap parent, but an amazing researcher who has done some work on uh, Syngap on adults. And she put out a tweet about a week ago um, saying that she submitted her first Singap One adult research for publication. So thank you, Dr. Andrade. Hopefully you're sharing some of those findings this week at ILAE. And um, all our kids are going to grow up, guys. All our kids are going to become adults. Some of them are going to be treated. So they're all going to be treated with different, different modalities. But Dr. Andrade's work is super important for understanding this disease and helping us get treatments into adults. So I cannot, I cannot say enough how grateful I am for her work, how proud I am that SRF is supporting that work. We have to do a press release on that. We're behind our press releases. We're so busy raising money and giving grants, we don't even have time to tell you guys about the grants. It's amazing. But Dr. Andrade, you're fabulous. Um, speaking of grants and money, today, uh, yesterday was September 1st, and we got, I think, six different grant proposals, right? So that's six scientists who've taken time to write detailed proposals that we will circulate with our SAB and our advisors, asking us for about $130,000 each to do some really important work on Syngap 1. Do the math, folks. Call it five. Let's assume one of them doesn't cut the mustard. That's $650,000. That's $650,000 of work that could happen on Syngap 1 if we can find the money and fund it. Do we have the money? I don't know. Stephanie Pavel and I have to talk about it. But I tell you what. We can we, we need more than we've got. I'll tell you that for sure. So please help us raise some money, right? Donate, do a fundraiser, start talking to your friends. The end of the year is coming. It's time to raise money. We need to support as much work as we can on Syngap 1 so that our kids have a better future. We have to do this for our children, guys. Everybody can do something. We all need to grab an oar and roll like crazy so our kids have the best possible future. I'm really excited about these proposals. Um, started reading a couple of them. It's amazing. So yeah, that that's it. Huge thanks to Vicky and Ashley and Sydney and Summer and um, Suzanne Jones. I didn't talk about Suzanne Jones. How did I miss this? Suzanne Jones, the soiree that I didn't go to last weekend was a major success. The numbers are still rolling in. Um, top line, I think she grossed almost four hundred thousand dollars. Now these are this is not a cheap event. So I think we're probably going to net like. 300-ish round numbers, but too early to talk about numbers. But um, congratulations, Suzanne, on the soiree. That's amazing. That's amazing. Congratulations, Summer, on your the work you're doing with your kid. If I didn't say it, yeah, I did. Katrina and Olga, amazing. Everyone's doing amazing work, and this community is fabulous. Jump in. You can volunteer. There's a link on our website, Syngap Research Fund, whatever. Volunteer, just Google it. And so I want your money. I need you to donate to SRF. I want your time. I want you to volunteer with SRF. I also want blood. Guys, I want it all. We need everything to make our kids' future as bright as possible. This blood will go into our biobank, which is with Combined Brain, which is under an IRB. It's, everything's super buttoned up and official. And, um, and if you don't, you're like, what's Combined Brain Biorepository? Google it. It's a thing. Combined Brain is a huge multi-million dollar organization that we are a part of. It's, a, it's an umbrella group of, of many great NGOs. But they have a biorepository and they are going to conferences. They're going to be at our conference in December. They've been to multiple conferences. Syngapians have donated about 16 or 17 or 18 families have given biosamples. And what that means is a needle in the arm of a patient, a Syngapian, and their siblings. So we have blood and plasma from patients and blood and plasma from kids. We're going to use these in studies to try to find biomarkers. This is real work happening now. The next two conferences that you can go to where you could give a biosample are on September 22nd in um, Liberty Township, Ohio. 
no idea where that is, but if, if you're from Ohio, you probably do. So on September 22nd, if you're anywhere near Liberty Township, Ohio, go to that conference. Combined Brain will be there. We can get you all signed up in advance. Give a sample. Help us fund research on Syngap1 with our money and literally our blood. This is what it takes to find um, biomarkers and therapies for our kids. And then KCNQ2 is having a conference September 29th in Chicago, Illinois. That one, I know where they are. And if you're in Chicago, please plan on going to that conference, giving a sample, helping us make the future better for Singapians. That's what it's all about, you guys. I hope I haven't missed too much. It's been a heck of a two weeks. Thanks for listening. Thanks for being a part of the Syngap Research Fund. We are doing everything we can over here to make Tony's future better, to make Carter's future better, to make Nathan's future better, to make Amelia's future better. And sometimes it feels like we're just rolling the boulder uphill. But sometimes I get phone calls and I realize that we are actually changing the world. Researchers are paying attention. These proposals that are coming in, some of them I knew were coming. Some of them I was like, who is this? And how do they write 10 pages on Syngap 1? So it matters, guys. Join the Syngap Research Fund. Help us, help us make the future better for our kids. Thank you.